Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to do a little how-to video. So I found this table here in the garbage. It's a solid wood uh, made out of beach table together with the legs back there. And also you can see here there was a bench with it. Um, they're all used, so let's say heavily used. The tabletop is pretty dinged up. The legs have been wet and they've started cracking on the bottom. And what I want to do is refinish this table and kind of take you guys along in the process and show you how to do it. So if you have a table like this or if you have a solid wood table, you can do it also. Everything that you need uh, to do this is on this table here. The tools you'll need are a belt sander, an center sander, and a paint gun. You can also substitute all of that, of course, with sanding blocks and a paint roller. You don't have to use these tools. You can do this all by hand. You can also scrape it theoretically. Um, yeah, it depends what you have. So I have all this stuff. I'm going to use this stuff because it's faster. So for the first roughing sanding, we're going to use the belt sander. I'll probably start on an 80 grit belt, then move up to a 120 belt to take off a lot of material off the top and off the legs because they're quite beat up and there's some deep gouges in them. So I want to get it all nice and flat. Then we'll jump over to the Accenter sander, this guy here. Um, this is similar to the um, Festool Rotex, where it has two settings, one where the whole sending disc rotates and um, has an excenter motion, and the other one this fine, where it's just the excenter motion. So I'll start with 120, 180 on the hard cut, and then jump over to 240 grit on the fine cuts and finish off the top. Then, as far as finishing, so for the top, I think I'm going to try to oil it with this uh, beeswax. Um, this yeah, Bondex, it's from PPG. I like this oil, it's nice. It's a uh, no color, so it's transparent. It just uh, gives a small kind of tint to the wood. On top of that, we're going to go with clear. We'll have to wait for the oil to dry. And then I'll, I don't know if this is sprayable or if we can only roll this. We'll have to look at that. If it's sprayable, I'll spray it. If it's not sprayable, we'll have to roll it. Um, the paint for the legs and the skirting of the table is this guy right here. So this is a black. I'll spray this. So this is also a matte paint. So we'll spray that on. Um, for the cracking in the legs, we're going to deal with that with this West System epoxy. So I'll get it all taped up and then we'll pour the epoxy in, let it fill all the cracks and stabilize the legs. And that's about it. Okay, the first thing I want to do is get this all uh, cleaned up to get all this whatever was left on the bottom of the feet here all cleaned up. We'll just do that really fast with the sander. Next thing we have to do is tape this all up. And the best thing to use is just some masking tape so that the epoxy doesn't leak out of the, the cracks on the sides. So get it all taped up to the bottom of the cracks. And then we'll take this mixing cup, mix up our epoxy pour it all in there and then we'll have to let that sit probably overnight and while that dries we'll jump over to the tabletop. Okay so we have to mix this epoxy I think it's a five to one ratio. Okay that was right five to one. So if we take our little mixing cup here I really like these cups they're actually from um, they're from PPG for doing automotive spraying and you have all of the various ratios on them so we need this five to one. Basically, we'll fill on the five the epoxy, and then you fill up to the same number on the one with the hardener to get the mixing ratio. So I think we'll need around, I'll fill it to two. So we'll go two, two, mix it all up. Then when you're done mixing, mix it some more. Then we'll fill everything into the legs, or we'll pour it all into the legs, and uh, should be good. Then we'll jump over to the table. Now here we don't really care, but if you're doing, for example, knots or something like that, if you're filling in, in a piece of wood, when you mix it like this, you put a bunch of bubbles into it. So actually, if you have a vacuum chamber, it would be good to put it in a vacuum chamber for a few minutes, get the bubbles out. And if not, I mean, the bubbles come to the surface eventually anyways, but then they kind of stay on the surface and ruin the surface of the epoxy. So what you can do is take a torch and just go over it really lightly. And it'll kind of pop the bubbles and flash off the surface. You can do it with a heat gun also. I usually actually use my heat gun, not a torch. 
So good that I checked because the bench feet also need epoxy. So we'll do both of them at the same time. Then just go ahead and pour it in. It'll find its way down into all the cracks and crevices. So since this is a kind of, let's say, beginner tutorial, I wanted to talk a little bit about sanding while I'm doing this sanding. When you have sandpaper, basically you can picture the wood like a tightly pressed together bundle of spaghetti is the, the best way to describe it. So there's a grain direction on the wood and the spaghettis are kind of lined up in that grain direction. And if you imagine what the sandpaper does, is it kind of um, through friction removes pieces of the wood or the spaghetti in our little analogy and so what that means is you want to go along along the spaghettis you don't want to go across them because that'll kind of break all of them and tear tear the wood fibers the next thing is sandpapers so there's tons of different kinds um, the lower the number the coarser the grit so you want to start always on a coarse grit if you need to remove a lot of material and then incrementally step up finer and finer until you think it looks good or until whatever you get bored of sanding. Um, I find for wood going up to around 240, 320 is more than enough. Here's our epoxy after about 20 minutes. So this leg drank all of it and you can see here on the side that it's gone down Oops, that it's gone down all the way to here on this crack. And it's still it's still flowing, so it's not it's not done yet. It'll probably go even a bit further. And the same with these. You see you can see the tape is wet, so it's gone down the cracks. If you saw in the one of the previous shots, I wiped down the table, so got all the dust off of the table. That's really important. Then I went out of the workshop for a couple hours, let, let all the dust that's in the air settle down. And now um, I'm going to take a, so not a wet, but a damp rag and wipe down the things that we're going to paint. So we're going to put the clear on these two. Um, I read a little bit about that clear and you can't spray it, unfortunately, so we're going to have to roll it. Most woods, when you, when you paint them or when you wet them or whatever, the grain will kind of uh, swell and come up. And even if you have a really nice smooth surface before, when it gets wet, the grain will kind of come up and it'll feel not so nice. It'll look not nice either. Beach is not so susceptible to that, so I think it will come up a little bit but not so much as something like oak, for example. Some people will um, make the surface a little bit wet, wait for the grain to come up and then sand it one more time. Wait for it to dry and then apply your finish. What I like to do, I'll just go ahead and put the first coat of finish. If any grain comes up, I'm anyway sanding between coats of finish because I find it makes the nicest surface, the nicest surface. So I'll put the first coat of finish. If the grain comes up, I mean, if it does, if it doesn't, anyways, I'm going to sand with uh, 320 the whole surface between coats and then apply the second coat. So if your grain comes up, that'll take care of the problem. If not, anyways, it'll make a nicer surface. So here's our finish. This is, um, yeah, like I said in the beginning from Bondex or PPG, it's a polyurethane water-based finish. As far as rollers go, use a foam roller um, for any kind of clear work. Don't use one of the, the hairy ones.
Nice little trick with the epoxy, by the way, before it's... Uh, so I've went ahead and removed all the tape here, and before it's rock hard, you can actually still cut it. So there's a point in the process where it's curing, where it's not yet fully cured, but it's cured enough that you can touch it and it's not sticky. And what you can do is take a knife and cut off all the high edges everywhere, so it saves you on um, sanding later. Now these will be painted black, so we don't need to get all the finish perfectly off. We just need to get a nice rough surface so the paint can stick to them. So I have to do all six sides. Um, I'll probably do these long sides with the belt sander and then hit the tops and bottoms with the orbital. Yeah, not even the bottoms, we're not gonna paint the bottoms. The tops with the orbital, the sides, and then all the edges by hand. Right, here we are in day two. I'm still half asleep, so excuse my half sleepy voice. Um, this is all nice and hard now, the first layer finish. What we're going to do is take some 320 grit sandpaper on a soft sanding block, so it's a rubber sanding block, and just knock off all of the high spots by hand. So we're not really sanding a whole lot here, we're just going to go over it a little bit. As I a treasure lent me from the obsession. Alright guys, here we go. Everything is painted, dry. I ended up doing one more coat off camera. So there's now three coats of paint on all of the black parts and three coats of finish on the tabletop and the uh, bench top. So everything looks really nice. There's a couple of weird little issues. So it seems on the tabletop there was um, a couple spots. Here you can see one where I think the sap of the wood started coming out and it kind of rejected the clear. So I tried to get it off as best as I could um, after the second layer and then I put a third layer on top and now it seems to have stuck but we got these little spots.